It's round two of the V8 Super Trucks Championship here at Sonoma Raceway in California, here live on Racebot TV. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back with the race after these messages. Averaging 0 0.10 gallons per lap. Pit stop at 5 gallons. Change right side only. Pit box in 10, 9, 8, 1. Bingo. 10, 4. Adding 5 gallons. Changing right side tires. coverage of round two of the V8 Super Trucks Championship here with Socks Out Racing live for you on Racebot TV coming to you from Sonoma Raceway in California and it proves to be an exciting race here today hello there I'm Paul Smith fortunately at Cisco Scaramus I could not make it today so it's just myself for today's broadcast there's conditions as we see it at the moment 2.4 miles around this track. Relatively cold air temperature, 18 degrees Celsius, mostly cloudy conditions overhead, so the track temperature is not going to be too warm, so tyres will be able to last a little bit longer before they start wearing out. And well, having a look straight away then at your championship standings. Bobby Zelensky after round one taking the lead. 105 points compared to Marco Mogren in second place with 97 points. Tim Klassens in third with Sven Kemmerts in fourth. James King fifth with Wade Hayes sixth place. Another one point between those two. Justin Krutov not that far behind in seventh. Sam Harris, Bram Reniers and George Gruber rounding out your top ten. And then the rest of your standings there. And, uh, well, it's been an interesting start to the season. It's been uh, real all about the uh, current champion, who's once again done a fantastic job at the front there. And then uh, there's the rest of them. David Applegate yet to get off the mark. Then in your team's championships, Kinetic Radical Collab, Leading that one with 93 points. Top Freak Racing, Blanchemont in second place with Slick Ankle, Slip Ankle, Mud Spots in third. Of Camber, Mud Spots fourth with Wakiva, Kinetic in fifth place. Team Bushfink, only one point behind in sixth. Atlas, Simsport in seventh. Team Mad, eighth place with Top Freak Racing, Cotscrew ninth. Team Mad, two in tenth place. In your championship standings, manufacturer standings. Well, we'll bring them up next, and uh, it is Toyota who is leading that one ahead of Chevrolet by just the five points in that battle, and also in your road versus Oval, it is the road boys who are currently leading 94 points ahead of Oval on 83. It'll be interesting to see how we get on with that battle as we go through the season and uh, some quick news for you as well because Socks Out Racing have partnered with Patriot Motorsport Group and I Analyze Racing to provide three talented eye racers the opportunity to compete for the chance to be a Patriot Motorsport Group NASCAR development driver 
Patriot Motorsports Group is looking for the best well-rounded overall discipline dry racer to start off their NASCAR Wheel and All-American Series Modified. And over the last two years, the V8 Super Truck Championship has attracted two exceptional drivers which compete in the NASCAR Peak and Free Series. And their adaptability displayed by these champions is what Patriot Motorsports is looking for in the next development driver. It's a really good partnership there for the V8 Super Trucks to be with... Uh, Patriot Mud Spots, uh, but we're heading towards the end of qualifying here, and this one the clock is ticking down, and then we'll be able to take you through your starting grid 20 car trucks, cars tells you what I normally commentate on 20 trucks starting uh, this race here today so let's take you through your grid now Bobby Zelensky, hometown boy, on pole position 133022 was about uh, two and a half tenths faster than Eric Blitz. Great to see Eric back. He uh, competed at Spa Frankshaw last year uh, in his debut race and finished third in that one. Sven Kemes in third with Logan Clampett back to the series in fourth place. Fifth, Wade Hayes with Mike Kapal. Sixth, seventh place for Michael Mogren and Justin Krutoff. Seventh, eighth. Ninth for Diogo Melro. Clifton Crockerell in 10th place, Daniel Thompson in 11th with Bram Reniers in 12th place, 13th for Aaron Smith the second, George Gruber in 14th for Taylor Burris 15th, David Crozier in 16th place, James King, Jimmy Mullis 17th and 18th, Magic Sakovic a, uh, a late entry uh, to today's event, that's why he's starting from the back, Mike Taylor also starting from the back after setting no lap time for that one. So that's your grid already. We're getting set 25 laps around this uh, magnificent facility. Last time we were in this series, of course, in fact, we'll show you up. This is the uh, schedule. Last time it was Intel Argos, really undulating track for Intel Argos there in Brazil. Now we've come to California. Another undulating track, tricky track to go around here at Sonoma. Phillip Island is coming up next with Trinring Matege in the fourth round. Fifth round we've got to the Nürburgring. That was seen of some great racing last season with Brands Hatch 6 at the halfway point of the championship with Brands Hatch. Silverstone then seventh round of Canadian Time Motorsport in eighth, uh, eighth place in the, uh, in the stand. In the stand is been a long day. Uh, ninth, the uh, ninth round is Indianapolis around the road course. Virginia International Raceway is the tenth round of the Mid-Ohio and Bathurst rounding out uh, your season here at the schedule in November the 3rd. Getting all set then for the start of this one. Bobby Zelensky is going to be uh, leading these guys round on their warm-up lap, getting everything all set for the start of this race. Tricky course to overtake up. Easy to make mistakes. We've been seeing cars in, uh, seeing trucks in practice getting up on two wheels with them clipping the curbs wrong and uh, almost sending them over. And, uh, well, this one is certainly going to be an, a, a, an intriguing race, that's for sure. But Bobby Zelensky showing once again that he has the pace in that Silverado. Silverado's uh, seen the front row there. Toyota in third place on the grid. Silverado's really taking out the majority of the front of the field. It's the truck of choice around Sonoma today. We get it all set then for the start of this one. Hopefully no incidents, no major incidents going to happen in this one. Hopefully it's going to be a clean start, clean getaway for all these drivers as you see them coming through the S's here. Tricky part of the track to go through. Now they've got to get themselves lined up side by side, two by two for this rolling start. You're going to see the iRacing roof pace car dart off to the left very shortly into the pits. And then we'll be all set for the start of this one from Bobby Zelensky, that's what he can see in front of him just that pace car he'll be setting the pace in just a moment's time, there it goes, into the pits 
All set then for round number two of the Sox Out Racing V8 Super Truck Series at Sonoma Raceway in California. Zelensky waits, he waits, he waits. The green flag is out, and away we go for 25 laps around Sonoma. Into turn one and two, they go up the hill, really tight part of the track already. Contact the 66, getting a note from behind Sven Kamat. We've got David Crozier and uh, Taylor Burris are around at the back. There's a the yellow flag, and in fact, we've got a caution straight away. Series organisers deciding that the best course of action is to bring out that safety car. Let's see if we can uh, try and find out what happened with David Crozier. It was into turn one, they went three wide. And oh, just a little bit of a clip and a contact. Both cars able to get going again. We'll have a look from on board. This is uh, on board David Crozier then. He's down to last. He was given space here. And then all of a sudden, oh, round he goes. He's looking up to flip over then, actually, uh, with that incident. Spins it round, gets back up and running. So, Bobby Zelensky then. It was a short, short run under green. So, we're under caution at the moment. And hopefully, we don't see the occasion of cautions breeding cautions. Not many uh, positions have changed since the start, but uh, we'll be able to uh, fire them off as they go across your start and finish line. Got to be careful with that hairpin, though. You can easily clip those tyres on the inside, stop you uh, cutting the corner. And before you know it, you're facing the wrong way and you've got a gaggle of cars facing you. So here we are then. Zelensky at the front. Eric Blitz in second place, Sven Kemmerts in third with Logan Clampett in fourth place. Then Wade Hayes fifth with Matt Kapal in sixth. Seventh then for Justin Krutoff who did actually make up a place at the start. Then Marco Mogren eighth dropping down one place. Daniel Thompson, great start from him. He's up from 11th to 9th to so two places there at the start. George Gruber from 14th to 10th. And don't forget that you have got the hard charger award in uh, this event you got one which will be uh, the driver gaining the most positive positions in this event and another one will be uh, the driver who provided the most excitement here in today's race of course those drivers who are in the podium positions cannot qualify for that uh, i analyze hard charger award but behind the pace car at the moment so what we'll do is just quickly step aside just for a moment, just while the uh, pace car gets everything sorted. And we'll be right back with the V8 Super Trucks. But you won't miss a thing under pacing as we go side by side. Averaging 0.10 gallons per lap. Pit stop at 5 gallons. Change right side only. Pit box in 10, 9, 8, 1. Bingo. 10, 4. Adding 5 gallons. Changing right side tires.
and a caution here, but the, pit, the lights are out on the pace car. So we'll be getting back to green racing very shortly here in the Socks Out Racing V8 Super Truck Series here from Sonoma Raceway in California. Round number two of the championship. Robert Zelensky, championship leader, currently in the lead ahead of returning driver Eric Blitz. Didn't take part in that first round. This is second place. Third place is Sven Kemmers with Logan Clampett in fourth and the third returning driver. Wade Hayes fifth with Matt Capone sixth. Justin Cruz off at seventh with Michael Mogren eighth. Daniel Thompson ninth and George Gruber rounding out the top ten. And well, we're getting ready for the green flag once again. It's Bobby Zelensky in control of the field here. Coming round the hairpin. Waiting for that green flag. Patiently waiting there. Green flag in the air. We're going racing once again. Single file restart this time. Hopefully everyone will make it through this time. Into turns number one and two. Sideways there for Blix. He's held on to that one. Great effort to hold on to that instant there. He almost went round, but he is able to carry on there. Great handling from Blix, but uh, Kemets now up into second place in this one. Plus battling all the way through Reniers. Reniers and Clifton Cockrell battling away side by side. Oh, and the contact, side by side contact between the two of them. That's going to allow Jill and Willis and James King to make their way through there. Down the hill. And we're green flag racing here, then lap four of this event, 25 lap race. You do have to take a pit stop. And with that first that first caution coming so soon, that's just going to help these drivers look after the tyres, look after the fuel. i be interested to see how this one goes at the front. But at the front, look at the gap already. Bobby Zelensky, 1.7 seconds ahead of the next driver. And uh, really, Zelensky, 1.8 seconds already, just charging away. So Sven Kemmers is picking up from where he left off last time out. That's into Lagos. We've got a, uh, a, a move for position. This is for eighth place. Justin Krutsov and Marco Mokra. Mokra goes down the inside there of Krutsov. Mike Taylor has gone to the pits. Something's happened there with Mike. Uh, try and find out what it was that happened with Mike. Oh, he's lost control. We'll try and get a better angle of that. It's coming around the S's here, then, in that beast racing car. Through the left. And it's this right hander here. He clips the curb there, gets on the power, and bang, into the tyre wall. It's going nowhere from there. That's the end of his race in this one. Zelensky already pulling away then at the front is Kemes and Blitz. Blitz will want to get a little bit of uh, payback for turn number one and two of that restart. Kemes, a little bit of damage on the rear of his car. That's going to be affecting his uh, performance slightly. As we're on board with Blitz then through this SS section. Really tricky section in these uh, trucks. It's Toyota versus Chevy. Through the right-hander. Oh! Blitz getting wheels onto the dirt there. Keeps a hold of the truck. Great car control from him. Coming out that hairpin there once again. for another lap, lap six now of this event. Into Worlds turns one and two once again. That battle for second place ongoing for the time being. Flix is really uh, getting that tail out on that Silverado. All up over the kerbs. That's what I was saying earlier. You see in car the uh, trucks going up onto two wheels. If you're not careful, you can tip this car, there's truck over. Down the hill once again, onto the brakes. 
through the long sweeping left hander. You've got to be patient around here. Don't let the power too early or you'll drag it, just push out wide onto the curb then at the exit. This tight section is really tight. It's a double apex right hander, but you might as well treat it as a hairpin and just use it as a, a one, sleep, one sleeping corner. George Gruber and Jimmy Mullins. This is a battle for 11th and 12th. There's also 13th, 14th behind and 15th. All in the queue there, sorting themselves out. A little bit of damage on the front of Gruber's car. That's going to affect him. Oh, and around goes Mullins. Mullins, will he touch the wall? Yes, he does. Gets the truck facing the right way. We'll see if we can get a replay of that one. And what happened to Mullins then? He goes over the kerbs. Doesn't touch a kerb, but just loses that back end. Around it goes. It just shows how easy it is to do in these trucks. He's back up and running the here in this race but dropped down to 19th place David Crozier going for a bit of a spin but he's back up and running now Wade Hayes fifth place in your race battling with Logan Clampett in front Clampett doing a uh, solid job at the moment starting fourth it's currently fourth Clampett is a privateer of course Wade Hayes in that Lakiva kinetic racing uh, truck and getting really onto the back of Clampett then pushing that truck hard on board with Hayes into this tight section now out that corner now get on the power use these curbs don't be afraid to use the curbs but don't use them too much don't abuse them or else you will end up like we saw with Jimmy Mullis, around all the tail just sneaking out there. Around the right hander. These trucks getting loose everywhere they go around this track. Tough track to race up here at Sonoma. As I was saying, difficult undulations. It's, we've got braking zones and the turns. Here we go then, Hayes for another lap. Lap 8 already in this event. This race has just flown by here today. Hayes just trying to uh, get closer now. He's got to be patient. Maybe think about looking after those tyres. Although you don't need to look after the tyres quite as much as you would have before with us having that caution period down the hill now. Long sweeping right hander up and then back down again on the brakes. This long sweeping left hander. This is where uh, Hayes was a little bit quicker on that last lap. Not able to, uh, to complete this time as they're going into this section now. This tight hairpin. Around the go. Well, looking at the. Uh, Positions gained on the side there. Sven Kemmer's up one position, Blunt's down one position, uh, Daniel Thompson up two, Romania's up one. Look at that, James King up five, Magic Sakovic up six positions in this race so far. The rest of your field showing on the screen there. Biggs Lucy would say is Aaron Smith the second out of that one. Well, coming through once again, starting the full lap. And we've got George Gruber stopped. George Gruber has had an instant, had an issue there at one of the worst places possible for car the trucks to come up on him. Able to get going again. We'll see if we can find out what happened there to Gruber then. Oh, he's already lost control of it there. Has he kept out the wall? No, he hasn't. Front and back, left corners into the wall. And tried to get it out the way right when there was a truck coming up. It was Mullis who he saw, and Brent Reniers is round now. So these trucks really struggling around this track. There's a lot of dust and dirt being brought on there at turn two. We'll have a look at what happened to Reniers then. You've got the 88 car, Sakovic, going wide. Oh, and he got tagged from behind with the 27. Clifton Cockrell. 
try and give you an onboard look of that one. Let's get that camera there. Mr. Cockrell then. It was an audacious move from Zakovic into turns one and two. He got a little bit slow then on the apex, and that's what checked it up there. And that's what meant that Clifton Cockrell made contact with the uh, the truck. And that's going to mean that uh, down positions then, George Gruber and Bram Reniers. This field just spreading out a little bit in this race. Already lap nine of this race, coming towards lap ten. In fact, starting uh, lap ten now is this man on screen. Bobby Zelensky, look at that gap that he's got there. 5.9 seconds ahead of Sven Kemmerz. Unbelievable dominance from Bobby Zelensky here, the NASCAR P Country 3 Series driver. Obviously showing why he competes in that series, as well as this series, it must be said. This series is much richer for having somebody of the quality of Zelensky in it as uh, Kapal. Man, Kapal got a little bit loose coming up over the hill heading towards this long sweeping left hander once again it is Hayes who's ahead of him Marco Mogren who's behind and as you can see there look at the there's just this queue of trucks here so the 44 truck Logan Clampett then Hayes, Wade Hayes, Matt Kapol is the next one, and then Marco Mogren there with Justin Krutoff just off the back there. About a second and a half behind this gaggle of four cars. It's four trucks, sorry, all together. You can tell I'm British, can't you? Not an American doing this commentary. As uh, we're heading in through the right-hander, we've seen trucks getting loose around there all evening. Onto the brakes for the hairpin. Logan Clampett then. Look behind there, and you can see his competition, Wade Hayes. Eight tenths of a second to go across the line. You can hear how much he's having to get off the throttle for turns number one and two. How early he's getting off the throttle there, I should say. And how ginger he is then on the throttle application. Right, left, over the top of the hill, come downhill and break early for this right hander. Oh, he's run wide as Clampett is into the dirt and that's going to cost him positions. That's down one place there. Wade Hayes taking advantage of Clampett running wide there. The mistake from Clampett and that's cost him a position. That Wakiva car up ahead of Clampett. Look at them twitching as they come out of that long left hander heading towards the hairpin here. Bit of damage on the side of that 44 truck. The two Silverados working through the double apex right-hander, heading towards the S's once again. Great battling, great shot of these trucks battling away through your field. We've lost Jimmy Mullis. Something's happened to Jimmy. He's had to take a tour back to the pits. We'll try and find out what. But meanwhile, look at Clampett has said, right, I've had enough. I'm making the pit stop. Uh, let's have a look. Jimmy Mullis, what happened to him here? In this one, it's going to be all on his own. Coming out that right, that left hander. Back end gets out there. Around he goes. He tries to hold it. And well, goes for a bit of a scenic route off track, and that was uh, the end of his day there. So, Logan Clampett on pit road, taking his service here, getting Sunoco fuel on board, tyres as well. Away he goes. That's a relatively early pit stop, if you think about it. Comes out right in front of the battle. Uh, with Aaron Smith the second and in fact that's not a battle for position because we've got a car that's lapped, a truck that's lapped down between them that's the uh, the truck of Taylor Burris that was in front yeah Mullis is out of this event 
the climb pit. That early pit stop, how's that going to affect him then later on in this race? As I said, it's not the hottest conditions here today uh, on track surface. So these tyres should be able to last that a little bit longer. Maybe try a little bit of an undercut, get a faster uh, outlap and run. And well, the next driver to take to pit road, Martin Kapal. So we've, uh, we've uh, clamp it, taking that opportunity to come into the pit. And you'd say he probably made the right decision with him going wide and off. And uh, we've got a battle there, actually. Diogo Melro and Daniel Thompson heading into turns one and two. These two side by side into turn two. Will they give each other room? Yes, they will. Just... And Melro up into seventh place at the moment ahead of Daniel Thompson, the off-camber off spots driver there. He'll be keen to get that position back. The crucial one we're looking at, Logan Clampett has gone through, whereas Matt Capel's just coming out of the pit road now. So that's a change of position. Oh, well, it's not a change of position, but it's Capel uh, just dropping back from Clampett there. So taking that tyre stop early might end up working out for Capel in this one. As uh, we look further forward then, Marco Mogren and Wade Hayes, fourth and fifth. Who's going to be the next one out of these two? Of course, it was a queue of four cars between these, these two, Logan Clampett and Martin Kapal. Who's going to be the next one to uh, pull the trigger, come onto Pit Road? Of course, the later that you come onto Pit Road, the fresher your tyres are going to be for the end of the race. What's well, Wade Hayes who's going to come onto Pit Road next? out of this group of trucks. Pits Pit Road gets the speed limit down. Gotta be careful with that pit lane speed limit. It's a long pit lane here as well. Everybody's gotta go down here though. So at some point in the race, everyone's gotta come down here. Magic Sakovic uh, from 10th place is onto Pit Road as well in this race. There he goes, hits the marks as Wade Hayes taking the tyres, taking to no curve fuel, waiting patiently, we've also uh, got Bram Reniers on pit road, here comes Hayes out of pit road, there goes Gruber and Kapal and Clampett and in fact Gruber's gone off there at turn number one, almost comes back on into the side of Hayes, Hayes says thank you very much. That's one position back, and he's got the drivers that he's been battling with in front of him now. So Clampett, Kapal, and Hayes is the order of those three that we're keeping an eye on. Let's see what Marco Mogram does later on. Battle for second place. Still ongoing at the moment. Sven Kemetz and Eric Blitz. Of course, we saw there was a little bit of contact between the two of them on the restart and they're both going to come onto pit road so it's a battle of the pit stops now and it's really crucial at this stage to hit your mark absolutely perfect to get to the ideal time for that pit stop Michael Mogger and Justin Krutov both come onto pit road for their pit stops here as well as Duke of Melrose, Daniel Thompson, James King so most of the drivers now are coming down pit road on lap 15 of 25 to make their pit stop and stop on your pit marker. There we go. It's going to be tyres, Sunoco fuel going into that truck. Waiting patiently for your pit crew to do their job. Look at how out the pits already. Sven Kemetz, Eric Blitz coming out not long behind him. And here comes Logan Clampett through into third place. That earlier pit stop faster lap times with the uh, newer tyres has meant that he's jumped them up into third place at the moment great driving great strategy from Clampett there, Michael Mogren has come out behind Wade Hayes and Kapal it's a battle for fifth, still ongoing between those drivers Aaron Smith for second and George Gruber are on pit road at the moment, so too is David Crozier Marco Mogren then, the Radicals six sideways driver. The Kinetic Radical collab, should I say. 
Really pushing hard, really trying to get that position for Wade Hayes. This is going to look to the inside, into this right-hander, this tight right-hander. That's not going to work this time. But you can see those trucks in front. You can see how much all these trucks are working their tyres. Look at how much they're moving about on track. That truck of Hayes just getting a little bit loose there. Bobby Zelensky, by the way, on to pit road then for his pit stop. Nicely done, 14.4 seconds, in and out. Away he goes, still in the lead. Battle for third place though, Logan Clampett and Eric Blitz getting really intense now. And into turn number one and two. Onto the brakes once again. Through the turns, and Blitz now really looking close, really looking dangerous, really looks like he's, uh, he's going to have to uh, push hard. Clamp it in that third place though, good to see him in the series, in that uh, 44 truck. Blake's though, looking to the inside, you're not going to make it from that far back. Eric showing the potential he showed uh, with that podium finishing place last year as Spa Frankenshaw ran out a little bit wide though onto the dirt hard onto the brakes once again for this hairpin at the corner of the go now laps ticking by from well, lap 16 at the moment about to start lap 17 of this race Great driving from these uh, drivers. It's up eight as it stands at the moment. Bobby Zlonski in the lead. With Sven Kemantz in second place. Then it's this battle for third place. Clampett and Blix, third and fourth. Kapal in fifth. And he's got all sorts of battle with him as well because he's got Marco Mogra in sixth and Wade Hayes right behind seventh place with Justin Krutov in eighth place. That's rounds out your top eight here in this race. Through start and finish once again, heading up to those first turns. And it's these battles, it's two battles going on. That battle for third place, the final step of the podium, and also this battle for fifth place between three drivers on track. Round the go then once again. Daniel Thompson has dropped down positions. He's had a, uh, a bit of a spin. And uh, he's down at the carousel. Unfortunately, not able to get it to you, I'm afraid. But look at this battle for third place. Down the inside goes Blix. Has he left his braking too late? The answer is yes, because here comes Clampett down the inside. That was all rather too predictable, really. But um, still shows the uh, audacity of the tenacity and place look at him launching over those curbs he's meaning business here as he goes through through the S's oh bouncing over the curbs once again over the dirt kicking it up he's dropping back a little bit here as Bobby Zelensky look at that fastest lap of the race a 133 248 then Great lap there from Bobby Zelensky. Race leader, 12.7 seconds ahead. At the moment, Marco Mogren and Kapal pretty close together. I say pretty close. They're almost side by side there as they're heading through the uh, start and finish straight. It's not much of a straight here, but certainly does its job. Throughs, turns one and two. It's a little dip here. And then you go into this left and then right. The hill helps you through this left. But then it takes it away from you on the exit here. You just rise over the top. The back will go loose through there into the tight right-hander now. Getting the power early. Carry speed through this right-hander. See Kapal just back in, just swinging out just that little bit. It's Mogren keeping the title line into this long sweeping left-hander. Onto the power. He's being patient with his power as Mogren. As well, Blitz once again looking for position here. They're side by side on the exit with Clampett. 
Complex and Glampy don't have an accident here, guys. They run for a good result, and uh, Blitz decides that uh, discretion is the best part of valor as he goes through. It's certainly been exciting in this one to watch as Blitz, but uh, it's not the race that he's wanted. He started in second place, he's down in fourth place at the moment. Into the hairpin once again. We're starting lap 19 of this event. The laps are running out here for Blitz. As we compare the lap times as we go across the line, Blitz, three tenths of a second faster on that last lap. He's showing, he, he, he means business, he's trying everything that he can to make the move stick. But not able to make that move stick at the moment. Marco Mogren look behind there, still chomping at the bit behind Matt Kapal. Wade Hayes doing a good job there, even though he has dropped positions in this race so far. Stick onto the back of these two drivers. They're giving us uh, one heck of a show, but it's these two here. Third place battle. Clamp it, flixed. Down through this long left-hander once again. This is where Blitz has shown a bit of extra pace. Not quite close enough to make a move this time around. As they come under the brakes now. Blitz though. Took his pit stop a few laps later. Three laps later. And clamp it. So he's on fresher tyres. Means he can push harder. Clamp it. He's got to be careful with those tyres. He's got to... Uh, Really be cautious. Not overheat those rear tyres. That'll be the issue. Round here. Clamp it onto the dirt once again. Excellent car truck control. There was a car truck spinning once again. I have a feeling it's David Crozier who's done it once again. It's his favourite spot and it is. He's staying out the way of everybody as they come through. Across the line. I have a funny feeling David Crozier's going to park that truck. Maybe not. He's got up, got up and running again. It's battled up. Third place still ongoing. Blix looking ever more like he wants to make that move. On board with Blix now over the top of the hill. Now down once again. Break. Look at him. He's hitting those apexes. Whereas Clampett wasn't quite hitting the apex then. That could be the tyres going a little bit away from him. Look into the inside. You're not going to really make a move down through this long left hander. Getting the power. Look at Clampett. So he's really yet uh, struggling with those tyres. Blitz having to look to the outside once again. Can he get the cut back here on the exit? He can't really do it because it's a big curb there on the inside. The exit of that corner. That means he has to be patient once again to Blitz in this battle for third place. Marco Mogren right onto the tail of Martin Kapal as well. Oh, almost, he's onto the dirt there at one point, in fact, through the S's. Kapal really pushing on. He's got newer tyres. Uh, sorry, Mogren pushing on because he's got newer tyres than Kapal. Into the hairpin, but Mogren just getting that back end out there. That back end's loose on that truck. Through we go, through the final corner. Starting another lap, 21 laps of this race gone. Oh, we're on lap 21, sorry, of this race. 25 laps in this race here, the Socks Out Racing V8 Super Truck Series here at Sonoma. It's round two of the championship. As we're heading up the hill once again. Mogren, Hayes and Kapal all together. That battle for fifth place. Kapal up one place, Mogren up one place in this race. Hayes down two positions. Downhill, but looking forward now. Blixed in that battle for third place. He's really close now. You can see how close he is. Heading in towards that hairpin once again. Going to take that wider line in. Again, try and hook it up in the middle of that corner. Try to get on the power, but it's not working for him as he exits that corner. Through the S's now. Time is running out. He's up on two wheels through the S's. 
doing everything you can here. That one pulse racing car. Into the final corner once again. Hard onto the brakes. Through the hairpin. Re the slowest part of this track, apart from maybe the hairpin at the end of that infield section. That's the line again. Black 22. Time is running out, and you have to say that Blix is going to have to make this move sooner rather than later if he wants to get that podium position. He wants a podium position at least. He started in your top three. He started second place in this race, in fact. Not quite working out for him in this one. Onto the brakes. It was that little contact with Sven Kemet on the restart. Look at the back end there. Getting on the power. Blix is giving it absolutely everything. Looking to the inside. Not going to work again. Going to run out of patience sooner rather than later here is Eric. He's going to have to uh, really make this one count into this hairpin again. He's shown that he can try and make this move into here a couple of times. He's got his braking roll a couple of times into there, though. Can't really make any more mistakes because if he makes a mistake trying to make the move, then he will not get that position. He won't get that podium. He won't have enough time remaining this one. So he's got to make one more. He's got time for maybe one more move. And to make that count is what he needs through this section once again towards the last corner time running out your leader by the way 17 seconds ahead of second place Van Kemmer's Bobby Zelensky just unbelievable he's out for a Saturday evening drive here he's that dominant here he knows the place like the back of his hand it's his local track into turns one and two once again, Blixed, not quite close enough to make the move. Look back, Michael Mogren, all over the back of Capel, but Hayes is there as well. They're trying to make the move. These are the two battles on track at the moment then in this race. Over the top of the hill, downhill once again. Mogren putting the pressure on. You can see how Capel's just back in, kicking out there. He's getting through these corners getting on the power and I tell you what that's a great move from Mogren down the inside is he going to have the pace coming out the corner he's got the outside line into the hairpin hard onto the brakes once again Capel Mogren Hayes is there Hayes has lost control he's around but we'll stick with this battle because Mogren and Capel still side by side as the head into the S's once again. And Mogren's got to be patient once more. But he's got the better line. He's got the better run through here. He's showing a nose, but it's on the outside. It's Mogren. Capel holding on to that position. And Mogren running out over the dirt. But at least he's got one truck less to worry about. He's got no worries from behind from Hayes. 24 laps of the race gone. We're on the penultimate lap of this one. You can see the tyre degradation coming into effect for a few of these trucks. A few of these trucks that took their early pit stops. Not too bad around here, like I say, with these conditions. But it is a tough track. Slow corners. You've got to get onto the power. You're going to spin up those real wheels. And that's going to affect your tyre your life, that's for sure. Through this section, look at that brilliant run from Mogren. Not able to make it count though as they head into this right-hander. It's just not long enough as that run into that right-hander for him to take advantage of that superior run. You saw him get up on two wheels through the right-hander. And now downhill once again. Kapal taking that wider entry into it, trying to take the later apex to get onto the power, onto the dirt. Mogren's there as well. Onto the brakes, but not close enough to make any moves at the moment. But look at this. Bobby Zelensky, your race leader, about to start his final laps. Look at the mud spots. That truck has been absolutely dominant in this race. And the way he's been driving in that first round of the championship as well, you'd have to say he's going to be odds-on favourite for the championship once again. 
Logan Clampett, Eric Blitz still battling over that podium position. Heading through the final turns. And Blitz has not been able to take advantage. Down in fourth place at the moment. Here he goes. Now don't forget that you will be able to vote on your uh, iRacing hard charger. You'll be able to do that on the Socks Out Racing Facebook group. Make sure you check that out after this event. They'll be putting up a vote for you to uh, vote on. Mogren and Kapal still pretty close together. Mogren getting all sorts of loose as he's heading down the hill. But we're going to have to look forward here because Bobby Zelensky is heading towards the end of his run here. You can see him. There he is behind the wheel. You can almost see the checkered flag from here through the right-hander then. An absolutely dominant display from the Slip Angle Mud Sports driver into this final hairpin for the final time. Oh, as the uh, car behind him, uh, George Gruber gets a bit loose, but it's going to be Bobby Zelensky, two from two here in the Sock Tap Racing V8 Super Truck Series across the line. And that is your race winner there by 21 seconds. Uh, well, we say that Sven Kemmers is still yet to make it to the final part of the lap. Eric Blix has dropped back off of Logan Kangpit, so that one's not going to out, pan out for him. We've got this battle, and it is Mogren ahead of Kapal, so Mogren has made the move on this last lap and made it stick. Can he hold on to that position, that fifth place here for Mogren? Coming out the final corners, look at Kapal, he's getting sideways, but he's not going to get that position then. So it's Kapal who loses out to Marco Mogren across the line there. Great stuff from those guys. The rest of your field is coming through right now. Daniel Thompson, he won't be happy with this. Down in 12th place, sat at 11th. Through he comes around that final turn. And uh, no, he's not the winner. That's the graphics not playing with me. There we go. The off-camber motorsports driver finishing in 12th place. And this one, waiting for the final drive to come across the line. And there he is, Bram Reniers, across the line to finish this one. He's the last driver on your lead lap. Wow, what a race. What a race it was. And let's take you through your final results then. Bobby Zelensky then, your winner by 21.2 seconds. And Sven Kemmers in second place. Third place for Logan Clamp, it beat Eric Blix in that battle in the end. Great driving from both of those drivers, good battling for them. Marco Mogren finally getting the upper hand on Martin Kapal for fifth place. Kapal finishing in sixth. Wade Hayes won't be happy with that, finishing in seventh place. Justin Krusev eighth in the end up in rather a lonely eighth place, really. Diogo Melro, ninth place for Team Mad there with James King, Team Bushfink Racing in tenth place. 11th for Magic Sakovic, then ahead of Daniel Thompson in 12th. Those two battled all the way through that race, it has to be said. Lofton Cockerell, 13th, and Bram Reniers, the last of the lead lap drivers in the top race racing Blanchemont car in 14th place. Drivers a lap down, George Gruber, Aaron Smith the second, and David Crozier, who uh, went for a couple of spins at the uh, hairpin. Mike Taylor, two laps down with Taylor Burris, three laps down, and Jimmy Mullis, we saw, having that off-track of excursion and retiring from the race. So what we will do then is we will just step aside for just a few moments. We'll get his breath and we'll get some, uh, hopefully some interviews from your drivers here today. You have been, uh, that has been the round two of the Socked Out Racing V8 Super Trucks Championship here at Sonoma Raceway in California. Don't go anywhere though. It's a post-race show right up after these messages.
averaging 0.10 gallons per lap. Pit stop at 5 gallons, change right side only. Pit box in 10, 9, 8, 1. Bingo, 10 4, adding 5 gallons, changing right side tires. Well, what a race we have just seen here today in the Socks Out Racing V8 Super Truck Championship. That was round two around Sonoma Raceway here in California. An absolutely dominant display from our race winner. And uh, we'll get to speak to him now. And it is, well, what can we say? Race win once again, Bobby. And you pretty much did it all on your own up front there today. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I went uh, obviously went really well, uh, starting on the pole and able to get a, a clean getaway. Um, and you know, it's always uh, tough starting, you know, double file and you have to go on the green. So if you don't get that perfect timing on the green flag, you might get passed going up the hill. So it all started great from there. And then, uh, and then yeah, we had that caution. Then we started single file. But really, I was just able to be able to focus on my driving. And uh, I love this track. So it went all it went well. I really couldn't tell that you like this track. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, you look at it. 21.2 seconds is the, the race win. How difficult is it to keep yourself focused when you, when you are just pulling out that gap lap upon lap? I've never had an issue um, in road course racing of staying focused. It's only in oval racing where I'll kind of lose focus. But road racing, it, it always has my attention. So I, I don't really have an issue with that. I was paying a little attention to Clampett's battle for third and my relative, but because uh, I heard he, I was in the same team speak as him and he was brawling with uh, for third. But um, yeah, it's not really that not really that difficult for me to stay focused. 
And well, you know, you're looking at this championship then, two from two. How confident you are going into the next event then to make it three out of three? Yeah, we'll see. I think we definitely shown our speed again this year and have enough speed to win. But it's still a race, and you still got to qualify well and not get any uh, off tracks in qualifying because, you know, you start in the back, it's nearly impossible to win unless you have some help from cautions. So uh, always try to stay uh, calm about it and just go into every race, same mentality, just try to do the best you can, and so far it's worked. Uh, well, before we let you go, as always, sponsors, friends, mothers, whoever you want to give a message to, take it away. Yeah, big thanks to the sponsors on the car, uh, Virtual to Reality and uh, Payday DG. Obviously, Virtual to Reality is doing a lot of cool things for sim racing and the racing community, so big big thanks to them for coming on the car in this series. Also, thanks to Virtual Racing School also on the car. I do coaching over there and data packs, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone at uh, Socks Out Racing for putting the series on. Well, congratulations on the win once again, and uh, all the best for uh, for your future in the, in the series in the next round. Yeah, thanks, Paul. That's Bobby Zelensky then, who uh, took the uh, the big W, the big win out of this race, and uh, we can speak now to the man who finished second in this race, that kinetic radical core lab car, Sven Kemmerts. And Sven, we saw how you start from third place in the race. And you were able to get the jump on Eric in that uh, in that restart. Just talk us through that to start with. Yeah, the restart. It wasn't my my cleanest restart by far. I uh, I had a, a very small run on him, and I put myself on the inside, and then well, you, you sort of met in the middle. I think I wanted to be a little more, a little bit more to the left, and I thought he was going to be a bit more on the right. But uh, yeah, I would say looking back at it, I'd say I definitely could have had a, a better done a better job keeping the inside line, staying away from him. So. Yeah, it was always going to be tricky. We saw also on the first restart. I mean, everything bunches up on the top of the hill and it gets sketchy quite fast. And that's it. And the thing is, in your position, then you were able to just gradually just eke out that little bit of a gap over the uh, the trucks behind you, and uh, especially with the pit stop phase as well, able to just get that little bit of a gap. But uh, just not able to keep with Bobby today. He, he just had the pace over everyone. Yeah, well, I think it was clear going into the race that on his home track, well, Bobby would be the man to beat, and well, as he clearly shown, he was easily the man to beat by over a second lap, I'd say, at the end, so, yeah, congrats to Bobby for sure, he definitely was, uh, well, as he was on previous, uh, last year as well, uh, the person to beat, to be honest. But second step of the podium, though, you must be delighted to be able to get that from uh, from today, tricky track to be able to get a podium result on. Yeah, it's a, definitely a tricky track, but it's also an extremely enjoyable track actually to drive these trucks, which are well not that, not that not that capable in, of turning. But it's uh, it was a real workout and uh, actual quite a bit of fun to get these uh, trucks around the track. And uh, before we let you go, anyone you want to give a quick mention to whilst you're here? I would like to thank uh, Marco. It's always a pleasure to drive with uh, Marco Mogren. I'm uh, sure you've seen him as well before. I uh, would also like to thank Workiva, which is our main sponsor for Kinetic Racing. They are providing us with an opportunity to race these events, so a big thank you to them. And finally, two more thank yous to Wade Hayes, which uh, helped sign the sponsor and also participating in today's race. And finally, a thank you to uh, John King as well, which is our team manager. And well, I'm, I'm sure you all know John, so he definitely deserves a few more thank yous uh, here and there. Absolutely. Well, uh, congratulations. Second place in this race. Uh, not, not something to be sniffed at today, that's for sure. Sven Kemas. So uh, that's second place sorted. And now third place, we will speak to uh, Logan Clampett. Now, privateer in the series, coming back into the series here, Logan. And uh, podium position, you started fourth. You must be pleased to be moving forward in, in the field in the race compared to qualifying. I... Uh... Yeah, I didn't have much practice entering in the race, so qualifying fourth wasn't too bad. I kind of hit uh, Sven there, entering turn one, lap one. I wasn't expecting him to park it, and then, uh, like, early in the race, I hit the tire barriers uh, in the hairpin, which gave me a minute of damage and cost me a lot of time. But then, of course, we saw you having that uh, epic battle between you and Eric uh, throughout that second part of the race. Uh, just talk us through that battle, because he just seemed to be 
a lot quicker than you through the long sweeping downhill left-hander into the hairpin, but then you were able to get the run out of the hairpin through the S's. Yeah, um, I short pit early, so I might have been like a little bit off for a few laps there because of the tires. It started to even out within maybe like five laps or so. Um, but yeah, uh, during the, the NASCAR course, I was definitely quicker in, but once we got to kind of the different course, which I'm not used to, he was, everyone was way quicker than me, Bobby and Sven and him. They were a lot faster through that sweeping left-hander into that hairpin or whatever. And, um, but it was, I just tried to defend there. Uh, a few corners after that long left-hander, and thankfully we held on to that position. And well, that's it. Podium position then is your result here today, and uh, you must be uh, you must be happy though to be able to take that away and uh, take that in towards the next event. Uh, yeah, I sure am. Okay, well, thank you very much for uh, for joining us. And anyone you want to give a quick mention to whilst you're here on the uh, on the broadcast? Yeah, uh, thanks for thanks to JDR Graphics for being on the hood and um, and Race Spot TV for streaming and Socks Out Racing for uh, hosting this league and Stephen. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Logan. Today, podium finish in the end. There, congratulations. That's Logan Clampett there, and uh, one other person I want to have a quick mention to, a quick word to as well, Marco Mogren, who finished this race in fifth place. We've spoken to a teammate already, but Marco, what a battle you had all the way through. You were involved in a sort of four-way tussle to start with, and after the pit stops, getting involved with Mar uh, Martin Kapal, you, you just you two just couldn't seem to be uh, separated today. No, we really couldn't. Uh, it was a great battle. Uh, but I'm a bit disappointed uh, because I think I had more pace. Uh, uh, but the, um, Martin defended really well um, for that last part of the race, so I really couldn't get it get, get a move to stick. And um, well, I mean the important thing here today is that uh, you started seventh, you finished fifth, so it's an improvement on where your qualifying was. Just how was the track out there for you today, uh, competing and and just how difficult was it to make those moves stick in the end? Well, Sonoma is notoriously hard to make a pass on, but uh, <clears throat> I think um, practice felt better because the car wasn't damaged then. Um, I was rear-ended quite heavily on the first restart, uh, which made the car a bit more loose, at, uh, both under braking and uh, on exit of turns. So the race, yeah, I, it, was a, it was hard to keep the tires alive. Um, it was. Uh, well, heading into the next event then, how how do you feel after your first two rounds of the championship, how do you feel going on towards the rest of the season then? Um, I hope I can turn it around. P2 in the first race, P5 in the second. I don't want to drop further back than that, so um, I'm hoping for a better result next race. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, just uh, anyone you want to give a quick mention to while you're here? Yeah, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Six Sideways CRT, Cranfield Simulation, and Aster Sim Race, along with Arma Centrum, who just made our new uh, gear. So I suggest you check that out because they've made some real nice shirts, jackets, and hoodies. Well, thank you very much, Marco, for joining us in the broadcast booth here today. And, uh, well, we're going to be pretty much uh, short of time here. I've uh, just got to uh, mention so. First of all, we've got to make a selection in the commentary booth. Now, normally it's myself and Cisco who make that choice as to who was the most exciting driver to watch in this one. And uh, really, I would actually pick Marco Mogren for that uh, that one, the way that he was able to battle with uh, Matt Kapal all the way through that race. So uh, great to watch him in that one. It was certainly fun to watch uh, throughout this race, uh, but hats off also to uh, drivers who gained uh, positions, people like James King and Magic Sakovic who made a ton of positions in that race. So don't forget to vote for your I Analyze uh, Hard Charger Award on the uh, Socks Out Racing Facebook group, and uh, that the winner of that will get a month's 
uh, use of the iAnalyze serv uh, service. Great service to, uh, to use as well to improve your driving. Well, as I say, we're coming up to the end of the broadcast, but, uh, well, we've just got a few people to thank. First of all, uh, it was myself, Paul Smith, on the uh, cameras and commentary. Istvan Bello with his uh, track cams. Check out trackcams22.com for his cameras. Uh, the overlay design by Andreas Werner, the man who has designed Valtteri Bottas's Formula One race helmet for this season so great to have him on board doing providing the design for our graphics overlay animation provided by simon grossman with their app Genia and their ativo product and live timing as always brought to you by nick Thiessen. and uh, you can always catch live timing on our major events here and well for the rest of the evening there is a new endurance series make sure you check that out on iRacing Live with Racebot TV but from everybody here from myself Paul Smith and all the organisers at Socks Out Racing for the V8 Super Trucks Championship at Sonoma Raceway what a race and what a championship it's been so far good night <laughs>